All right, so for number 26, uh, it asks for an amplitude, period, phase shift, and vertical shift for this function. Um, so our parent function is just a regular sine function, right? Um, so we gotta look at what's being changed about this sine function. Well, first, we know that the amplitude is always out in front of, uh, out in front of the sine or the trig function. So our amplitude is gonna be five. It's always the absolute value. And then our period is going to be, so we have our B, whatever is being multiplied by this X is our B, right? So we got that two. So then the period is always equal to two pi over our B. And so we said B was two, right? So it's just gonna be two pi over two, which is pi, so that's our period. And then our phase shift, so once we, we gotta factor that two out of the whole thing in the parentheses, right? Um, and so, because that'll give us our phase shift, so then if we factor that out, we'll have negative five sine of two times, well, we gotta divide pi over four by two, so that's gonna be x minus pi over eight plus three. And so that's gonna give us our actual phase shift and we see that it's being shifted right by pi over eight, right? So we just say pi over eight. And then our vertical shift is always on the outside of that, right? So our vertical shift is just three. Okay, so for number 27, we have a transform tangent function. Um, and it tells us some points that it passes through and we have to find a possible formula for this tangent function. Okay, so first we can see that the period, or it's repeating, the asymptotes, or the tangent is repeating every two, right? There's like a distance of two between this, like the negative one and one, and the one and three. So we know that the period is gonna be equal to two. And we can use the equation above, um, where we know like the period is equal to, um, well in this case it would be pi, right, over b. Uh, because this is a tangent function we're looking at. So if we say period is equal to pi over b, or b is equal to pi over p, that's going to be equal to pi over 2. So that's going to be our b. Um, and then next, we can look at this kind of right here, um, because this is like our halfway point, right? And so... In order to see the amplitude, we know this is at 1, and this is at negative 3. And so the distance between these is 4, which gives us our amplitude of 4. Um, and we can see that, just going off of this, uh, usually the tangent function starts at 0, at 0, right? Um, but here it's starting at 1, which tells us that it's being shifted up 1. And lastly, we can see that... Uh, it's being reflected, right? It's not going in the direction that tangent graph usually goes. Um, and so we can either, the good thing about tangent is that the reflections look about the same um, if it's being reflected across the y-axis or the x-axis. So you could actually put the negative wherever, uh, but we're just going to put the negative out in front and say our function is f of x is negative, and then we said it had an amplitude of 4, and then tangent of our b of pi over 2x, and then we said it was shifted up 1, so it's going to be a plus 1 on the outside. Okay, so for number 28, we're just finding the period for the following function. So we've done this in the two other problems. Um, and so we know that for tangent, period is equal to pi over b, and our b is always going to be what's being multiplied. Um, by that x, and so our b is 1 8th, so it's pi over 1 8th, or 8 pi. And for part b, uh, we're given cosecant, which is um, related to sine, right? And so we know the period is going to, uh oh, goodness gracious. If we can scroll back up. Okay, we know the period is going to be equivalent to um, 2 pi over b. And so, and we know our b in this case is going to be two thirds, so that's out in front. So it's going to be two pi over two thirds, which if you do that math, that'll give you three pi. All right, on number twenty nine, uh, we have to we are given these expressions and we have to simplify. Um, and so for part a, 
we have this cosine x plus sine x squared and remember we can't just like square those terms individually what we have to do is we have to write it out like uh, cosine cosine x plus sine x times cosine x plus sine x and then we have to remember that we have that minus 2 cosine x sine x and so once we factor these out we got the cosine times cosine x so it's going to give us cosine squared of x and then cosine times sine that's going to be another cosine x sine x and then we got sine times cosine sorry i'll write these out like that and then sine times cosine which will give us another cosine x sine x and at the end of that we'll have sine times sine which is plus sine squared of x and then we still have that minus 2 cosine x sine x and so if we add these together the cosine x sine x is that'll give us a positive 2 cosine x sine x so then and this is a negative 2 cosine x sine x so we can just cancel these whole things out and we know from the Pythagorean identity um, cosine x squared or sorry cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1 uh -oh. I don't know if I can move this over. There we go. That's going to be equal to 1. And so that'll be our answer using Pythagorean identity. So on part B, we have 1 minus cosine squared of x plus, or times 1 plus cotangent squared x. And so we know that these are both Pythagorean identities and we know that 1 minus cosine squared of x is equal to sine x sine squared x my bad and then 1 plus cotangent squared x is equal to cosecant squared x right um, and then we know that this is equal to 1 over sine squared x with reciprocal identity because it's a reciprocal of sine so then that'll be sine squared x times 1 over sine squared x which then those cancel each other out and just leave us with 1 okay so on number 30 it asks to express tangent t in terms of sine t um, if t is within is greater than pi over 2 and less than pi. Um, so if we draw first, if we draw a unit circle to see where t is. Well, this is pi over 2 and this is pi, right? So we know that this is going to be in quadrant 2, which has a negative cosine but a positive sine. And so we just got to keep that in mind when we're doing this evaluation. Uh, but we know that tangent t is equal to sine t over cosine t and so we can find an expression for cosine t in terms of sine right because this has to just be in terms of sine um, and so from the identity sine squared t plus cosine squared t is equal to one we can say and we can solve for cosine t and say all right so if we subtract that sine squared t over and then square root we'll just have cosine t and so we can say that cosine t is equal to it's going to be plus or minus. Whenever we take the square root, it always is plus or minus. 1 minus sine squared t. And like I just said, it's in quadrant 2, right? We said it was in quadrant 2. And so we're just going to get rid of that positive, and it's just going to be negative. And so we can rewrite that and say tangent t is equal to sine t over the negative square root of 1 minus sine squared t. Okay, so for section, well, section 8.4, number 31, it asks to find exact values and radians for each of the following. And so for part A, for cosine inverse of zero, um, we can just plug it in our calculator and also think about where on the unit circle is cosine zero. And we know that cosine is zero at pi over two, right? And our calculator shows that. So we know that zero at pi over two. And then for the other one, for part B, we have to find the sine inverse of 
negative uh, radical 3 over 2. And so we just think about where in the unit circle can it give us negative radical 3 over 2. Well, and if we plug that into our calculator, it gives us negative pi over 3. And then for part C, we have to think about where on the unit circle we get uh, radical 3 for tangent. And so that'll give us pi over 3 as well. And I'll just box these in. And then for part D, we have two different ones, right? So first we have to find the cosine inverse of ne negative 1 over radical 2. And we know that, that get, that's 3 pi over 4 on the unit circle. And so then what we have to do is take the cosine of 3 pi over 4, which gives us negative 1 over radical 2, um, which makes sense since we're taking the cosine um, of the inverse cosine. So that'll give us negative 1 over radical 2. And so for this next one, um, we have to take the sine of pi or 4 pi over 3 and then take the sine inverse of that. So then if we plug that sine 4 pi over 3 into our calculator, we know that that's going to give us negative radical 3 over 2. And so then we have to take sine inverse of negative radical 3 over 2, which gives us negative pi over 3. And then for lastly, on part f, we have to take the tangent inverse of 1 and then, or sorry, of negative 1 and then take the tangent of that. And so if we take the tangent inverse of negative 1, that will give us negative pi over 4 as shown in our calculator. And so then we just take the tangent of negative pi over 4 and that gives us negative 1. Okay, so on number 32, it says if a ski slope has the measurements as shown below, what is its angle of elevation in degrees? So it says angle of elevation, so that's going to be this, right? And we're given an opposite side and adjacent and an adjacent side. So that tells me we have to use tangent. Um, and so tangent equals opposite over adjacent or 2100 over 2600. And so that's just going to be tangent theta is equal to 2100 over 2600. And so to get theta by itself, that's what we're looking for, um, we take the tangent inverse of it, of both sides, making sure that our calculator is in degrees. And so if we do that, we'll have theta is equal to tangent inverse of 2100 over 2600, which gives us 38.9 degrees. Okay, so... For number 33, it says to simplify and give an exact value for the tangent of cosine inverse of 20 over 29, right? And so it, first of all, we should start off by making it a little simpler and saying that this is our theta because then we just, we're basically saying find tangent of theta. Um, and so if we say our theta is equal to cosine inverse of 20 over 29. Well, then if we take cosine of both sides, that'll get rid of the cosine inverse on the right side and say cosine theta is equal to 20 over 29. Now, what we can do from this point is kind of set up a triangle to express this relationship. And so this, if this is theta, that means this side is going to be 20 and then our hypotenuse because it's op or adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So then our hypotenuse is going to be 29. And so to find tangent, um, we know tangent is opposite over adjacent. So then we have to find that opposite side. And we can use that op to f find that opposite side by using um, Pythagorean theorem and say that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so if our a squared is 20 squared, plus b squared equals our c squared of 29 squared. And so then if we do the math for that, we'll get b is equal to square root of 29 squared plus, or sorry, not plus, but minus, minus 20 squared. We'll get a b of 21. And so we can just write that in here. 
And so then we know that the tangent of our theta, um, so if I write this out, the tangent of our theta is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is 21 over 20. And so if we rewrite that, we'll say tangent of cosine inverse of 20 over 29 is going to be equal to 21 over 20. Okay, so for number 34, we have to use an inverse trigonometric function to give solutions to the equation in terms of integer k, and then with initial solutions in the interval of negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Um, and so we, for this 5 sine x plus 7 is equal to 3, well, we gotta sign, we got to solve for the angle, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the 7 over, which gives us negative 4, and so then we say 5 sine x equals negative 4 and then we'll have sine x is equal to negative 4 over 5 and then if we take the inverse of that and put it in our calculator we'll say x is equal to uh -oh, x is equal to the sine inverse of negative 4 over 5 which our calculator gives negative 0.9 Two seven two nine five. Continuing, um, and so then, if we draw this out, um, that's being measured from here. So that's gonna be the, an angle going this way. We got that because we got that negative, and so that's gonna be negative zero point nine two seven two nine five. And so we know that the reference angle. Um, for a sine function, so this is in the fourth quadrant where sine is negative, right? And so we know that the sine is also going to be negative in the third quadrant, in this quadrant. So we know that it's going to have reference angle here as well. And this is going to be also be 0 0.9275. Because um, this is going to, you know, our sine is going to be at negative 4 over 5 here. And so it's also going to be, this sine is going to be negative 4 over 5 here as well. And so in order to find that actual angle, though, being referenced from our starting point, what we're going to do is we're going to do pi subtracted by that. So pi minus that, I'll just say sine inverse of negative 4 over 5, which is pi plus 0 0.927295, which then gives us 4.068887. And so if we're doing that in terms of integer k, we know it'll repeat every 2 pi k, right? So then we take both of our solutions and we say this is negative 0 0.93 plus 2 pi k. And we're also going to have 4.07 plus 2 pi k. Okay.